what we're going to do here, guys, is look at the car development between the two teams, Red Bull and Ferrari, and how it's evolved over the season and the d difference in pace between the two cars. And yeah, the two cars, obviously, we're looking at this Ferrari uh, car of 2022 and the 2022 Red Bull. Now, the Red Bull car, its strengths are, you know, uh, it's a comfortable car to drive. It's not the best car aerodynamically or even maybe chassis-wise on the grid. But it is a comfortable car to drive, doesn't porpoise as much as other cars, but does have, with its de design philosophy, very good straight line speed, the best straight line speed from the entire field. When Ferrari's car is a lot more aerocentric, it's a bit draggier than the Red Bull car, and at um, you know tracks with more corners, especially slow and medium speed corners, the Ferrari car goes well. But let's get into... Um, firstly, the first Grand Prix of the season and just the difference um, in pace between the two teams at the first Grand Prix. So Red Bull were a tenth of a second slower in qualifying than Ferrari, uh, Ferrari were. And Ferrari in the race up until the safety car came out, which I think was lap, what was it, lap 40-ish I think it came out, the safety car. Uh, let me just check actually when it... Uh, came out actually i can't remember when it came out. i think i've got the other laps here for all the other comparisons i'm going to do but this is the you know the pace on average between the two teams up until that safety car came out in the latter part of the grand prix ferrari were only uh, eight hundredths of a second quicker on average in the uh, grand prix so even though that might not sound a lot when you consider at the point now where we know red bull have a much better car at um lower downforce higher speed tracks which the bahrain uh circuit is it's clear to see that at the start of the season ferrari had the better car because if say the two cars ran now at that track red bull would pretty clearly win that grand prix by at least a few seconds of course if they didn't have the reliability issues they had in bahrain but it wasn't just the story with Bahrain. It was really the story of just the start of the season. In testing, Ferrari, we knew, were pretty much the best team on the grid. Red Bull did improve their pace quite a bit with a new sideport design at the end of pre-season testing. But from what we saw in Bahrain, Ferrari were on pace better than Red Bull. And even in Saudi Arabia, where obviously Red Bull won, they only won just from Ferrari, who was still pretty fast, and Red Bull did have to rely on their great straight line speed compared to Ferrari to be able to just about overtake Charles Leclerc for the victory and win that Grand Prix. Then we started getting some upgrades of the Australian Grand Prix from both of these teams. Here you can see with Red Bull, they brought a new front wing end plate to the Australian Grand Prix. You see the old there on the left hand side and the new on the right hand side. I'm pretty sure you will be able to see the clear differences in design here. <clears throat> Sorry, in, in the in design here. And what this was to do was not just to improve the uh, grip of the car, but also to cut some weight, uh, which was a big problem for Red Bull at the start of the season, as we know. Ferrari, at the same time, were bringing new upgrades. This was a new diffuser design that they brought to the Australian Grand Prix as well. And you can just see here really just what the whole area looks like. And even though Red Bull were starting to cut some weight off the car and they were rumoured to be as most or as much as uh, 15 kilograms overweight at the start of the season compared to the uh, the weight limit for the new 2022 cars. Even though they were trying to, and they were, getting on with the job of cutting that weight, they were still lacking a bit of speed compared to the Ferrari team. Because in Melbourne, Ferrari did show quite a bit of superiority to the Red Bull team. So, in qualifying, Ferrari were pretty much three-tenths of a second quicker. And then, on average, in the race, up until Max Verstappen's retirement... They were a quarter of a second per lap quicker than Red Bull. Now, 
obviously the final sector at the Melbourne track is, um, you know, it's going to suit the Ferrari car a lot because there's lots of corners. And even the first sector, to a certain extent, will suit the Ferrari car. But that track has become a lot more high speed. And it was thought at the time that Red Bull would be a bit more competitive then than they actually were. But in the end, they just were not. And this Grand Prix, I think, is the clearest indication that Ferrari were just so much quicker than the Red Bull team because Charles Leclerc would win the Grand Prix by, I think, a pit stops gap over Sergio Perez, who finished in second. Leclerc was now leading the championship by, I think, compared to Verstappen, by 46 or 47 points. And it was looking so, so good for Ferrari. And there was no doubt Ferrari had the best car on the grid. Uh, no real doubt about it. But then... We got to the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, the race after. Here's an upgrade Red Bull brought, uh, brought to the splitter area of their car, uh, a new winglet. But also at this Grand Prix at Imola, they started to significantly cut that weight at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, where they did get a 1 2 finish and were quicker than Ferrari in the race. They were able this weekend to cut, uh, I think, 5 to 7 kilograms of weight off the car and by the time we got to the spanish grand prix which we'll get into in a moment they were pretty much uh maybe not the same as ferrari in terms of weight but they were about where they wanted to be um in terms of their weight and weren't too far away from where ferrari were with the weight of their car but once we got to the final grand prix before the proper european season started obviously the emilia romagna grand prix in italy but then we went back to um, America for the Miami Grand Prix. This was the pace difference now at the Miami Grand Prix between the two teams. Red Bull were uh, two tenths of a second uh, slower in qualifying compared to Ferrari. Max did make a mistake though in his final run of Q3, so we don't quite know what he would have done of that final lap in qualifying. But then on average, Red Bull were just over a tenth of a second quicker than Ferrari in the race. And that is based on uh, the lap times up until that final safety car of the Miami Grand Prix. And this is something we weren't seeing really um, up until this point, And even the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix where Red Bull were quicker and able to be quicker in the actual race itself compared to Ferrari. And they were also looking after their tyres a lot better. Ferrari was starting to struggle a bit more compared to that. Or compared to Red Bull in looking after tyres. And it was definitely starting to swing more so in Red Bull's direction. In terms of the uh, them improving their car a lot more than Ferrari. And closing that gap. And now starting to get at least on equal terms with the uh, Ferrari team as Max Verstappen won, obviously, the Miami Grand Prix. But now let's get into uh, at the Spanish Grand Prix, obviously a very important circuit for uh, aerodynamics. Let's get into what the pace difference was at that Grand Prix where we saw um, some upgrades there. So in qualifying, Red Bull were three tenths of a second slower than Ferrari in qualifying, and on average during the race, up until Charles Leclerc's retirement, uh, Leclerc was two tenths of a second quicker than Verstappen on average up until his retirement. I know obviously Verstappen made a mistake, and then he was held up for quite a while behind, I think, his teammate um, and George Russell in the Mercedes, but there is no doubt about it, Ferrari were quite a bit quicker than Red Bull in Spain, and... Now we were coming to, say, more aero-heavy circuits in terms of the reliance more so being on aero, uh, such as Spain, uh, Monaco, Baku, I guess you could say to a certain extent. I know you have the very long straights there, but obviously the middle sector, they're very, very important um, in getting you know, good lap time out of that track. We were starting to see Ferrari really showing um, you know, just how good their car is when it comes to absolute pure downforce and even though Red Bull's car was still improving and getting more some equal terms with Ferrari it's a bit difficult to look at this time period in terms of Red Bull versus Ferrari because in Spain obviously Leclerc retired uh, from the race then in Monaco it was a wet 
and then dry Grand Prix. We can't really compare the pace between the two different teams that much there. I mean, in qualifying, Ferrari were quite a bit quicker than Red Bull. Not really a surprise because of the type of track that Monaco is. Then, of course, in uh, Baku, Leclerc and Sainz had a double engine failure. And then at Silverstone, Max Verstappen um, had a, uh, a problem with debris getting in or damaging his floor, I think, of his car, which caused him to go a lot slower in the uh, the, the like final 80% of that Grand Prix at Silverstone. And, uh, and even in Canada, it was a bit skewed in terms of we had Leclerc starting at the very back and then Verstappen and Sainz were fighting at the front for the win, but they were constantly, because I think there was an uh, an early virtual safety car or safety car, I can't remember exactly, uh, they were constantly, uh, for staff and sites, varying on their strategies. One driver would be on fresher tyres and suddenly the other driver would be on fresher tyres. It was never the same. So it's pretty difficult, like I said, to look at the pace difference between the two cars during this period because of all those variables that were happening at the time. I just want to show this as well. This was a rear wing mirror update that Ferrari did bring, I think, at the British Grand Prix. So Ferrari were still bringing upgrades, but Ferrari's strategy in 2022 has been really just to maximise what they have rather than slapping loads of upgrades or as many upgrades as they can on the car. Uh, well, we'll get on to, though, why that strategy maybe hasn't worked out so much, but also uh, an upgrade they did bring uh, to the French Grand Prix and how that did actually affect uh, their pace in, say, the, the races closest to us in this 2022 Formula 1 season. But what we will do is compare the Red Bull and Ferrari teams and the pace um, they had compared to each other for the Austrian Grand Prix. Uh, the Austrian Grand Prix, obviously, is a power circuit and um, you'd think that Red Bull would have dominated that Grand Prix, how they've gone um, as of late at those type of circuits and also how they've gone most of the season at uh, higher speed circuits. But in qualifying, Red Bull were only a couple hundredths of a second quicker in the Friday qualifying we had that week and obviously we had the sprint race on the, um, on the Saturday. But in the race itself... Ferrari, on average, were uh, a tenth of a second quicker than Red Bull in the race. Obviously, lots of times during that Grand Prix, Ferrari were on um, either older and then fresher tyres. So when they were on fresher tyres, Ferrari were gaining quite a bit more than a tenth of a second on Red Bull on average during the Grand Prix. Uh, but Ferrari were definitely faster in that Austrian Grand Prix. There is no doubt about that. Um, and the reason... Uh, that is, is because Red Bull, as I've got into in a previous video, they brought a floor design, I think, to the Austrian Grand Prix that, put it this way, hasn't quite lived up to the um, to the expectations maybe that Red Bull had. So here is the floor design uh, that Red Bull uh, brought. And... I'm going to try and quickly uh, find a um, a good explanation as to the differences with the floor here compared to the one that uh, Max Verstappen is running because they have now started to uh, run different types of floors have uh, Red Bull with the two drivers, which has caused a slight controversy um, on social media. So in regards to the floors... Uh, not all the updates have worked at Red Bull. Um, Perez has the new uh, bottom uh, for the floor, but the innermost diverter is not cut like in Austria. So, yeah, this floor design just not working uh, as much as uh, they were hoping for. And that's a big reason. And also um, not getting the setup maybe as right as they could have in Austria was a reason why in Austria they weren't as quick as they were hoping um, to be and ha as they probably should be at that circuit. By the way, that information I just read out is from at Smilex Tech on Twitter. 
who's an engineer, F1 technical analyst. Make sure you go check him out on Twitter, especially if you are Italian. But yeah, this floor just wasn't giving Red Bull the uh, the pace that they really needed, and they would eventually uh, go with a different type of strategy, which was running Max with a older floor that he's more confident in in terms of its handling. Um, and then running with Sergio Perez, the newer one, rather than bringing a completely new floor. And the reason they had to do this was because, obviously, the cost cap uh, limitations, and they can't just bring a new floor to solve all of these issues like they could previously. But also, Ferrari were having uh, new uh, floor upgrades around this time. And on reflection, their floor upgrades haven't actually worked um, as much as they were really hoping. So you can see here, this is, by the way, from Albert Fabrega, a very good person or analyst on Twitter. Make sure to go check him out um, and him looking at the, uh, the new design. So on the top here is Paul Ricard, and on the bottom is the, I think, the older one. And if I just scroll back up, you can see differences in the shape of that particular part of the car but if i go to the second picture you can see uh say a better indication to the differences so again here on the top this is the paul ricard um upgrade and then you can see again if i scroll down to the bottom the differences in the shape of that part of the car and that is essentially the upgrade that ferrari bought uh, brought to the um, French Grand Prix, but since then, it hasn't worked for them. Hasn't delivered the type of pace they were hoping for. Hasn't delivered really any significant pace at all compared to what they had before this upgrade. But also, they've noticed that they are wearing their tyres out quite a bit more than uh, they were, say, beforehand. That's one reason, another reason why they were so good in Austria compared to Red Bull is that they were looking after their tyres quite a bit better than Red Bull were. And if we go to this comparison at the Dutch Grand Prix, which is quite an aero-heavy circuit, you can see how this new uh, floor for Ferrari just wasn't working for them. So Red Bull were a couple hundredths per second quicker in qualifying compared to Ferrari. That wasn't necessarily down to the car, more so Charles Leclerc <clears throat> not putting together the best final lap in qualifying that day. But in the race, on average, up until the safety car that came out, I think, on lap 55, Red Bull were three tenths of a second on average quicker than Ferrari. That is something we have not seen at all this season. At an aero heavy circuit, Red Bull B, that much quicker on average compared to the Ferrari team. For example, if I go back to the. Spanish Grand Prix comparison, Red Bull were a couple tenths of a second slower on average compared to Ferrari. Um, or if I go to the Australian Grand Prix earlier in the season, again, a couple tenths of a second advantage. Normally, at this circuit or at these type of circuits where aero is a bit more important, Ferrari do have the type of advantage that Red Bull had over them in the race. And it wasn't necessarily purely down to the Red Bull car having more grip, it was uh, the tyres getting worn out quite a bit um, with, on the Ferrari car with this new floor compared to what they had previously. Now, Ferrari are starting to test their old floor uh, designs and just work out, really, why um, this lack of pace in the race has suddenly hit them. We'll see uh, whether they can work on some improvements when it comes to this, but when looking at this whole situation and the development between the two teams, I think one thing we can absolutely say is that Red Bull have developed quite a bit better than Ferrari this season. Red Bull have had you know slight hiccups. Like I said, that floor they brought or trialed in Austria and France didn't quite work out for them. But at the start of the season, Ferrari were... A bit quicker than Red Bull um, on average. I don't think there's really any doubt about that. And then progressively over the season, Red Bull have improved the aerodynamics of the car. And most importantly, cut the weight of the car, which is the biggest reason why Red Bull 
are in a position they are in now. And Ferrari, if you look at their upgrades this season, maybe at the start of the season they improved the car by maybe a tenth or two here or there. But really, since the European season began, Ferrari's car hasn't really, in terms of pace, got any better and hasn't improved with developments to the car. It's pretty much the same car pace wise that we have seen since uh say the spanish grand prix it hasn't really evolved like say the red bull has in certain circumstances and actually with this new floor design has actually got worse which of course is not good at all for the ferrari team um obviously th there might be some upgrades coming i think at the singapore grand prix which is coming up very, very soon that Ferrari are rumoured to maybe be bringing a final upgrade to try and get another win or two before the season is over. We'll see if they can get that. But once again, Ferrari in a championship battle have been outdone on development compared to their rival. This used to happen, of course, with Mercedes back in 2017 and 2018. And even, you could say 2019 as well, even though there wasn't a proper title fight that season, Mercedes did upgrade their car for at least the first half of the season, better than Ferrari did. Uh, but, you know, looking at this season, Red Bull, you know, their car has progressively, 90% of the time, got better when Ferrari, um, yeah, first five or six races, maybe the car was slightly getting better, but then just hit a brick wall, as it normally does with this team in terms of development. And that is why uh, Red Bull are going to win uh, the championship this season and why this man is going to win the driver's title as well let me know guys in the comments section how do you think the development between these two teams has gone over the course of 2022 and just let me know your general thoughts as to the topic of this video but guys to my next video has been me chazar hd goodbye